Peter, welcome. Thank you, Jackie. Peter, you've been new, new to the college and arrived here about nine months ago. Can you tell us something about your background? Yeah, well, I'm an electrical engineer uh, by background, uh, but for the last uh, decade or so I've been a, a CEO of now so a third organisation. Uh, and prior to coming here most recently, I was the CEO of Engineers Australia, which was a, a similar organisation for the engineering profession in Australia. So I've got a good relevant background in membership organisations. Uh, to bring to the RACP. Yeah, so a strong membership experience, membership organisation experience. Mm. Have you seen many similarities or differences between the Engineers Association and our college? Yeah, in fact, it's often quite, quite similar. It's what we do is the same. It's about uh, engaging members for their professional uh, training, their career, their development, mm. uh, advocacy with governments uh, and the like. Uh, and of course, the same issue for all membership organisations is making sure that we provide good value to members um, for their membership fees. Uh, and that's an opportunity I think we can do some, some more work at the college on. So Peter, you've been uh, CEO of the college now for about nine months through some very complex periods. Um, what, what have your initial impressions been? Well, I think you've described it well, Jackie. Um, it is a complex college because we do uh, a lot of things. Uh, in fact, many more things that probably most members would appreciate. So we do a lot of activity, um, so that's the first observation. Um, the second one would be, um, I see passion um, for the college and the purpose of the college um, in both the members and the staff. Um, and thirdly, I've been just made so incredibly welcome here. It's been lovely to join the college. Mm -hmm. So while we're complex and uh, we're doing a lot of things, I think that passion will be really important in making sure we can um, deliver for our members moving forward. And you've recently undertaken a major restructure of the senior leadership group. Can you tell us what you were looking to achieve through that restructure? The objectives of the restructure were about uh, providing more clarity and focus of the senior leaders of the organisation on staff to deliver against the strategy of the organisation. So I've reduced the size of the team, um, focus it more on the key membership strategies um, and thirdly, I think very importantly, create a position at the executive table for a fellow to join the leadership team to bring that experience of the membership into the decision making of the management team. And we've recently recruited for that role. So I'm looking forward uh, to the new team uh, delivering better for the membership going forward. So Peter, you've come in at a time as well when we're just getting a gender equity uh, working party underway and I'm really pleased to have been part of that. You uh, are involved with the Male Champions for Change. Would you like to speak a little bit about how you see those two roles or those two initiatives complementing each other? Yes, yeah, thanks Jackie. Uh, one of the things I've certainly learnt over the, the three or so years as a, a Male Champion of Change is just how deeply embedded gender inequality is in systems and processes and culture. and when you see that occur in many sectors, it was engineering previously, now I see the same thing in health, you become really aware of the need to break down some of those barriers and to reset some of those issues. So uh, I think the work that the uh, working group will do um, will complement the work of the male chambers of change. And I think they're both uh, an issues that will work very well together. But having said that, I think in the longer term, I would like to think that we use this as a catalyst to also drive a broader discussion around uh, equality through a bunch of other areas to inequity, whether it be race, religion, um, sexuality or the like. Um, there are other areas where I think the college should be engaging in that diversity inclusion debate. But the starting point most definitely is gender equity. Um, but in the longer term, I think we can do even more. Peter, to finish, we really must um, uh, acknowledge the challenges that our colleagues, in particular in Melbourne, uh, physicians and our trainees who are at the forefront of responding to acutely unwell patients in hospitals are experiencing the leadership from our public health physicians. Uh, I'm wondering um, if you have any other messages for members, particularly how our college can support members through this time. Yes, no, I, mean, uh, I will reflect your comments that the work our members are doing uh, across 
uh, both countries is, is just amazing. Uh, but particularly at the moment in Melbourne, it's a, a very difficult time. Uh, so we have done um, a number of things to try to assist those members. For example, uh, moving our Congress program online so that members can still um, learn and still get uh, CPD points. Um, we run um, webinars around telehealth for those who never used telehealth before. And uh, webinars about business stimulus packages, which is particularly important for those in, in private practice. Um, and I will remind members also, of course, that we do have the Converge service. So if members are feeling the stress of the circumstances and they need counselling or support, they can access the Converge service through the college as well. And how best to contact the college if they want to access Converge or indeed ask you a question or any other staff? Well, the uh, Converge details are available on the website, um, but you can also at any time uh, simply email CEO at racp.edu.au and I'll happily respond to uh, member feedback and inquiries. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for your time today. Yeah, Good thank to you, talk Jackie. to you. Pleasure.